So good to have all of you here today. Thank you for making it to Mass. I will never forget the story of this one couple who was eating breakfast every day, every single day, and they would be looking out the window and they noticed the neighbor's laundry hanging there and they'd be commenting to each other, look at how dirty their laundry is. <laughs> they need a new washing machine or maybe a better laundry detergent. Until one day, they're eating breakfast and the husband looks out the window and he looks at his wife and says, honey, the neighbors look, their laundry is all clean. They must have gotten a new washing machine or a new laundry detergent. And the wife looks at him and says, no, sweetheart. I clean the windows. <laughs> Isn't it like that so often in our life that we notice the splinter in our neighbor's eyes but we don't notice the big beam that we have in our own? You know, this talk of Jesus today in the Gospel, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off, or if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off, or if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It doesn't appear in his public teaching, but rather his private teaching to his apostles. How many apostles were there? Twelve. That is the church. When the Bible speaks of twelve, it is speaking about the church, like the twelve tribes of Israel or the twelve apostles. So Jesus is not speaking to all those people out there. He's in Capernaum, Capernaum, in the house with the twelve, and he's instructing them, he's teaching them, which means he's teaching all of us who are on the in, not on the out. And so often we think that Jesus is speaking to all those other sinners out there. Just not me. Huh? You see, the twelve, they're continuing their dispute about which one will sit on Jesus' right and on his left. They are arguing with themselves about who is the greatest. Do you remember last week the continuation of Mark's gospel is today? They want control. They want power. They continue, in other words, boiling in their jealousy, which is why, you know, John, the beloved one, the one who's supposed to be all loving, what is he, what is his big preoccupation with Jesus? Teacher, we saw somebody driving out demons in your name and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. And Jesus replies and says, do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. The big preoccupation, not just of John, but of all the twelve, is who is in and who is out. In other words. Hmm? Jesus we found someone who was working miracles on your behalf. They're doing something they're not supposed to be doing. Because huh? they're not with us. John's attitude is, we are the ones who are the twelve, and some other guy is working miracles in your name. But we are the right ones. Huh? We have it all. That's where John and the others say to Jesus, Stop him, Jesus. He can't be doing this. He doesn't have the authority. But Jesus says, He has my authority. Huh? Do not prevent him. Stop with your jealousy and your envy, says Jesus. Stop it. Cut it off. Pluck it out. You know, so often people think that they meet their friends when it's going well in their life. You don't meet your friends when it's going 
bad in your life. You meet your friends when it's going well in your life. You think your real friends are the ones who are going to give you a cup of water or help you. Anybody can do that. Because it makes them feel good to help you. But your real friends are the ones who celebrate your success, who are happy for you when you get a house, when you get a car, when you get a good job, when you make it, when you find a husband or a wife. There's, they celebrate your success, not this jealousy and envy. You see, this whole gospel today is about cutting and plucking. And it's all in the context of jealousy and envy and preventing others from working miracles in Jesus' name. It's about cutting your jealousy and envy off. It's about you thinking that you're better. They think they are better than others because we are part of the 12. And Jesus says, no, you are just as much a feces-producing machine as anybody else. <laughs> You go to the bathroom the same way other people do. Cut this attitude off, says Jesus. Pluck it out. Get rid of it. It has no place in a follower of mine. Jesus is saying, cut your attitude of thinking that it's all the other people that need to change. When the, we, we see this all the time. My husband needs to change. My wife needs to change. My children need to change. People who come to confession, they're very good at that, you know. They start off and they say, Father, my husband. I'm like, well, if your husband wanted to go to confession, he would have been here, okay? <laughs> what are your sins? Oh, I don't have any sins, Father. <laughs> I'm just here for the graces of the sacrament. Well, then let's take the statue of Mary down and put you up there if you don't have any <laughs> sins. We are all in need of change in our life. It's not the government needs to change, the president needs to change, the church needs to change, everybody needs to change except me. You notice that? Every single person needs to change. Everybody except me. No, I am the one who needs to change. The gospel is seeking our own personal conversion. Me. Hmm? Not all the people out there, but me. I am the change that I want to see. I am the change that I have to be in my life, in my marriage. Hmm? Not them. I'll never forget walking through Walmart one day and I, I, I came across this lady that I hadn't seen for a long time in church. And so I said to her, I said, you know, why haven't I seen you for such a long time in church? What's going on? How come you don't go to church anymore? And she looks at me and she says, Father, I don't want to go to church anymore because it's full of hypocrites. Mm -hmm. And I looked at her and I said, oh, don't worry, there's always room for one more. <laughs> Jesus is saying, you cannot exclude people just because they may not be part of your group or think like you. Mm -hmm. If you have this type of attitude, he's saying to the 12, which means to all of us, Cut it off. Stop being exclusive. If your eye would allow you to look at someone with disregard and say, he's worse than me or not as good as me because he's not Catholic. Pluck it out. He's not as good as me because he's not Republican or Democrat. Pluck that attitude out. He's not as good as me because he's of this or that. Pluck that attitude out. What kind of eyes are you looking at people with? If your foot, that is where you are standing, causes you to feel so sure of yourself because you are Catholic or Christian and it makes you feel better than others, cut it off. Cut that leg off. Stop with the superiority attitude. Hmm? You see, uh, Jesus is talking today about Gehenna. Gehenna was this hill outside of the city of Jerusalem where the garbage would be burned. And that's why it's saying fiery Gehenna. 
It's talking about the, the garbage dump. And when garbage is compacted, it produces fire. So there would always be fire there. They would burn the fire, the fire there to burn the garbage. Not only that, this was the place where the bodies of dead soldiers were piled up. Not only that, the Canaanites, you've heard of them in the Bible? The Canaanites, who were there centuries before Jesus, they practiced human sacrifice on the hill of Gehenna. We know that from Jeremiah chapter 7, which I'm sure all of you will look up, okay? It was a place where people would dump other people's bodies. Hell is not some place out there. Hell is something that is inside of you, that you can live now, and you can continue living in the afterlife. It's a state of being. That's what heaven is too. Heaven is not like, you know, out, you know, somewhere there. No. Heaven is the presence of God. You have the choice of whether you choose heaven or hell. And not only that, through your attitude, you place other people, particularly those in your life, your spouse, with your mouth, yeah. with the words you call them, and all these other people, we place other people in heaven or in hell. The choice is ours. What is the attitude that carries us in our life? Is it an attitude of welcome? an attitude of non-judgmentalism or an attitude of pointing fingers. Hmm? They're worse than me because they're not like me. No, 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 no. That has no place in a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus who did not deem equality with God something to be grasped. The first letter to the Philippians says of St. Paul to the Philippians. Chapter 1, Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not deem equality with God as something to be grasped, but rather he humbled himself, taking on the form of a slave. Hmm? That's Jesus Christ who humbled himself. The first letter to the Philippians, not like in one of the parishes where I was at, somebody got up to do the reading from the letter of St. Paul, to the Philippians and they read it and said, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Filipinos. <laughs> no, it's to the Philippians. <laughs> Humility is what Jesus wants for all of us. You know, uh, as I, uh, you know, family, it's a, it's, a, it's a tough thing, isn't it? You know, you, I always say, you know, we come out well with our family, but just on photos. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it that has caused you the most problems in your life? Okay. You know, think about it. It's the people you love the most, isn't it? Well, we were talking, and, uh, you know, the one person in my life, and I have a, a huge picture of me and my grandmother in my living room, and we were talking, uh, and one of the things we talked about was one of my cousins who moved out of Poland and when she left Poland she met an African man from Ghana who is not Catholic, who is also black from Africa and who is Muslim. And her parents disowned her because of that and have never met their grandchildren. Uh -huh. So much so that this uncle of mine who is so very sophisticated and educated, and my aunt as well, they've gone, they have a lot of education, they've been to universities, they're 
they said to my cousin that if she visited, that he would shoot her. Mm -hmm. And the one person, because my cousin wanted to visit, obviously, you know, she's from Poland, she wanted to visit. And nobody wanted to have her over to their house because of prejudice, bigotry, racism, close-mindedness, and judgmentalism. He's not like us! He's Muslim! He's not like us! He's from Africa! He's black! But the one person that welcomed my cousin with her kids for a visit is my grandmother who never went to school because the Nazis closed all the schools in Poland during the Second World War. So she never went to any university. And when I told her, I said, you know, Grandma, do you know that uh, he's not Catholic? Do you know that? And she says, no. I said, do you know that he's Muslim? And she says, well, I don't really know what that is. But I said, well, it's a different religion. And she says, well, I don't know. She says, but I do know one thing, she says, that there is one God and he loves us all. Do you have to go to a university for that? To know that? That there is one God and he loves us all. And you know what? She welcomed my cousin with her kids. She stayed there. And it caused for my grandmother for her to have her hand cut off and her foot cut off. You know how? Because it's very sad for me to bring this up. My aunt and uncle do not speak to my grandmother to this very day. Mm -hmm. Because she did that. She welcomed my cousin with her Muslim and African husband and their kids who are black. Not only that, many of her neighbors want nothing to do with her. But my grandmother would rather have that hand cut off, that foot cut off, or that eye plucked out. Because having your own children not speak to you because you did something that rubs them the wrong way, that's like having one of your members cut off. But she'd rather do that than deny her faith than deny her belief system and her value system. It will cost you another way. In other words, it will cost you. It will cost you. There'll be people who will cut you off. It will hurt, but it's worth it. You know, if you walk into my grandmother's house, you will see now a big display, a big picture of her, my grandma, with my cousin, her African husband, and their grandchildren, and her great-grandchildren, who are black, for all the neighbors to see, and for all the family members to see. It's a big picture. Of course, the picture she has with me is a lot bigger. <laughs> but it will cost you. Listen to those words of Jesus again. What is the attitude that you need to get rid of? The superior attitude. What is the sin that needs to be cut off in your life? It's better, Jesus says. Listen to that. It's better. It is better if you 
for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna. Hmm? Let us pray today for that grace in our own life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand today and profess our faith. <laughs>